Have you ever thought that sometimes when there's a, a community welcoming of a hero, whether it's uh, wartime or someone has accomplished a, a, a wonderful thing and they get back home and everybody's celebrating and then all of a sudden they're saying, do you remember him when he was two? Do you remember him when he was a teenager and all the trouble he got into? And now he's a hero? How did that happen? <laughs> you see? Sometimes it's tough because we, Satan gets in there and starts mixing things up, see? Gets us distracted from what is, what is now the most important to what was then, which is not important. God works and changes. And that happens through the various challenges that come to us. When Jesus encountered his own people, his own families, he was not necessarily a threat, but he was asking them for more at that point than they were willing to give, and that was their faith in him. They had a difficult time. How do we do that when Jesus comes home to us and says, I want you to to do one more thing. Yes, you're feeling exhausted, but I want you to do one more thing. Here's what it is. It's not going to be something that you're really comfortable with, but it will help you grow. And we may fight it tooth and nail until we realize when we give in, Jesus indeed gives us all that we need to meet that challenge. And not only to come through it, but to come through it well, having grown. The people, his own family, his friends, relatives, others, uh, they could have been blessed beyond any imagination, but they had a hard time with it. Jesus marveled, we hear, at their unbelief. But, and here's, here's, the, here's the biggie, that didn't stop Jesus. It didn't stop him. He said, okay, if they can't accept it, they're going to have to deal with that. But I, I still need to keep preaching. I need to keep inviting. I need to keep telling people who I am. And he sent out his disciples, just like he continues to send out you and me, so that others will become familiar, and then going beyond that into a relationship, and then into actual faith, be as small as it may be, but then Jesus doesn't leave us alone. He keeps bringing us challenges, maybe sometimes some real uh, 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 trials, but it's to help us grow. It's to help us go beyond ourselves. And we find out that that these disciples actually had joy when they came back and, and uh, related to Jesus what had taken place. They were stretched, but they trusted. And when they came back, they found out what it was like to put, place their entire faith in Jesus and see what he would accomplish through them. It's for us too, folks. Let Jesus have full control. And when there's a challenge that comes up, when you're feeling ill at ease, that uh, God plants a thought, and you're saying, wow, where'd that come from? That, that's certainly not anything that I would be good at. Well, guess what? This may be the time when you're ready and God knows it. So don't push him away, see? But let your faith be challenged and changed and deepened so that you can go beyond. You can experience that joy that Jesus promises. And he tells us, he gives us all the basics that we need to know as we do that new thing that he calls us to do. It's all plan, you know, planned out there. Whatever you do, you see, whatever challenges we have, we do it to the glory of God. And when we do that, we find out that Jesus indeed empowers us. He gives us all that we need. So have you been wrestling with some things that have come out of the blue? Jesus has come home <laughs> uh, and he's saying, hey, 
I have some really neat stuff for you to do. Raise your anxiety level? Good! Because that's what's going to make it fun. As we together, we go out and we do something very uniquely different for you. And then the interesting thing is too, is that we discover that there are other folks whom God has been tapping on the shoulder. And you can find ways of praying for each other and supporting each other and finding out that there is a real joy because there's some connections in there. Jesus did that with his own relatives. There were some that did receive him, but not all of them. We're told later on in, in, uh, in, in history and tradition that eventually all of Jesus' brothers and sisters became believers. And they went out and they evangelized. That's kind of encouraging. If we'd have left the story right there, that would have been a bummer, wouldn't have it? They said that was the end of it. But no, that wasn't the end of it. Even though they did not receive him at that point, later on they did. But Jesus had planted the seed by coming home and sharing the good news with them too. But he was not going to just get bogged down by uh, the astonishment of unbelief. He went on. Because there were more people that needed to hear the good news. And because of that, he shared it by sending his disciples two by two. Folks, they didn't, these were folks that, that were tax collectors, you know, hated people, uh, run-of-the-mill fishermen. I mean, good heavens, but can you imagine being out of their comfort zone? But they did it because they trusted Jesus. They placed their faith in him and took it one more step. They received it from Jesus and they went and they discovered how they grew, how they developed, because Jesus was busy nurturing them all along, surrounding them with love, huh? encouraging them, and teaching them how to do it for each other. That's the awesome thing, see? When Jesus comes home into our hearts, what are we going to do with him? Are we going to say, yes, I want to go deeper, Lord? Or are we going to say, leave me alone, I'm comfortable? Well, Jesus may leave you alone for now, but he's not going to leave you alone forever. He'll be back. But the sooner that we allow Jesus to use us, the more joy we're going to experience. The more uh, completion we will be able to live now. Because there are folks that really do need to hear. They're waiting to hear. God is preparing them to hear. And we have all kinds of things going on within the life of this congregation that Jesus is setting up so that we can accomplish these things. Think about it. And when Jesus comes home to you, will he be astonished that you don't want to place your faith in him deeper? Or Will he be in joy saying, all right, let's get busy. Let's do some stuff. It's going to be fun. They will be filled with joy because we're doing it not one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to be doing it together. Ha. I'm loving that. And we can thank God that Jesus went back to his home because that means that as a seed is planted, there will be joy eventually. But sooner the better, don't you think? Hmm? Amen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another.